the case of Lebanon, they did educate. And we should be honest about that. Uh, during the Gaza massacre, uh, Nasrallah limited himself pretty much to verbal support for the Gazans because he knew full well that he went beyond verbal support, Israel would come in and destroy Lebanon once again, and the Hezbollah would lose a lot of support in Lebanon. Uh, state terrorism, like terrorism generally, it does and can work. But in the case of um, Lebanon, th that part of the deterrence capacity was restored, but they suffered a major military defeat. In the case of Gaza, it has to be said, they both educated the civilian population, and boy was it ever an education, and it also achieved a military victory because, well, as Gideon Levy puts it, the fighting in Gaza was war deluxe. Compared with previous wars, it is child's play. Pilots bombing unimpeded as if on practice runs, tank and artillery soldiers shelling houses and civilians from their armored vehicles, combat engineering troops destroying entire streets in their ominous protected vehicles without facing serious opposition, a large broad army, ours, the Israeli, is fighting against a helpless population and a weak, ragged organization that has fled the conflict zones and is barely putting up a fight. Well, we have to say to Thomas Friedman's credit at any rate, uh, he was candid about Israel, what Israel was doing. He was trying to inflict a heavy pain on the Gaza population. Uh, not everybody was as candid. You take the case of Anthony Kordsman. He's a uh, very highly regarded military analyst. He's on all the talk shows. How many people have seen Michael Co Anthony Kordsman on TV? Raise your hand. Let's see who that is. OK, a few. Good. Um, and Kordsman, uh, a couple of weeks ago, he came out with a report on what happened in Gaza. It's called the Gaza War, calling a strategic analysis. And he concludes, he says, quote, Israel did not violate the laws of war during its attack on Gaza. Well, that was a remarkable conclusion. So I was curious how he reached it. And I went through the report quite carefully. Uh, he went on a, a uh, visit to Israel sponsored by the American Jewish Committee. Uh, he doesn't mention it was paid for by the American Jewish Committee. You have to do a little extra research uh, to find that out. He just says Project Interchange. It turns out Project Interchange is sponsored by the American Jewish Committee. He goes to Israel and he interviews Israeli generals. He interviews Israeli press spokespersons. He interviews Israeli officers. And he reaches the conclusion Israel did not violate the laws of war. Well, Far be it for him to have just limited himself to those interviews, because he's a serious military analyst from an important center for strategic analysis. He didn't just interview generals. He did some real arduous, serious research. He read all the Israeli press releases for all 22 days. And he found his press releases, as he puts it, so insightful, so illuminating, that he re reproduces them across 20 pages of his strategic analysis. And since none of the generals said, hey, I'm a war criminal, and none of the Israeli press releases say, hey, we're committing war crimes, the reasonable conclusion is Israel did not violate the laws of war. Uh, about three days ago, Amnesty International published its first report on what happened in Gaza. It reached a rather different conclusion I'll just read briefly from it. In the three weeks following the start of the Israeli military offensive, Israeli forces killed more than 1,300 Palestinians, including more than 300 children and many other civilians, injured 5,000 other Palestinians, again including many civilians. Israeli forces destroyed thousands of homes and other property and caused significant damage to the infrastructure of Gaza. Some of the Israeli bombardments and other attacks were directed at civilians or civilian buildings in the Gaza Strip. Others were disproportionate or indiscriminate. 
Amnesty International has found indisputable evidence that Israeli forces used white phosphorus, which is a highly incendiary effect in densely populated residential areas in Gaza, putting the Palestinian pop civilian population at high risk. During the same period, Hamas and other Palestinian armed groups continued to fire indiscriminate rockets into residential areas of southern Israel, killing three civilians. Direct attacks on civilians and civilian objects, disproportionate attacks, and indiscriminate attacks are war crimes. Bear in mind, Israel boasted throughout the massacre that it was applying dis, uh, disproportionate force. It was a term you constantly heard. Under international law, a disproportionate force is a war crime. They were openly admitting, acknowledging, we're carrying on war crimes in Gaza. Uh, 